Hi, Tech Rabbit here again. Continuing with the 3D printer build. Um, final section in the instructions. Eight, electronics assembly. So let's have a look at that. So okay, so here we have the parts, plastic parts, the hardware, and the electronics, and the electronics box, some uh, cable holders, some more wrap, uh, screws. So that's what we're going to start with. Okay, now we're going to start with step two. Assembling all the parts. To put the rectangular knot in there. So that's step three. So that's in there now. And um, now I have to bring over the printer again. Okay, now I need to identify the mount holes. That must be that one and that one. As far as I can see. And then we're supposed to take that one. It's like, you can see where it's in, embedded a bit. So, screw it in there. And then, which way around is it supposed to go? Ah, oh, black on black in their own pictures also. Well, that's not easy to see. <laughs> Gone. And then it's probably something about not tightening. Too. Oh, I did say tighten it. But I'm hoping I'm going to get the alignment correct. see it well enough. It's supposed to be like that. I know black on black. Absolute nightmare. Just make the contrast a bit better. So now I probably can see it in the camera. Be okay. So that was step five. Okay, I'm going to, need to take the top hinge. <coughs> Recessed, I put the screw through, and then we need to take the cover. Oh, just trying to 
figure out. So it's going to look like that. That should be okay. So I need to take this. Put that in there. Put it in. In the bottom. No, I think I have it with the... No. Okay, this is not making sense. Oh, no, 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 no. That must be... Why have they got extra holes in here? Doesn't make sense. I think that actually. The one's down here. Oh, it wasn't easy to see in the dark, in the picture there. That's the way it's supposed to go. At least it fits. No, I, I don't know why they have the other holes. Because I don't think they're going to be used for anything. And they didn't warn about two bear versions existing. Oh, it's not straight at all. Now it is. And then it opens and closes. Okay, so that's done. Step six completed. Can't even see those extra holes. In. Not, not in the picture at least. That's so strange. Okay. Okay, so then we need to, to reposition the camera. Because now they want us to wrap this here. with this and they want us to put a zip tie on the top so I will just get to work on that so that's the 
x-axis. Ugh, not wrapped very well. What did I do? Oh. Okay, more work. So, now I think I've got a bit, a bit better and nicely in there. So, okay, so next is to um, gather some parts for step eight to um, install the base. So I'll get onto that. Okay, so now we've got six um, 10 millimeter screws, four flat nuts, and um, four standard nuts. And then the base. And then we need also the. Uh, put it this way around. Electronics part. Okay, now we need to put the. Um, Flat nuts in place, and one goes in there, and the another one goes in there. The picture, and then there's two that need to go in there, and they're not very good holes, so I think I'm just gonna have to struggle them in. Okay, so now I got them in after ah this this print I I don't know if it's not like optimum quality. I I was actually surprised they went in easier than I thought they would just by the look. But then I had a problem with this one here. I did the ori I've already fixed it, but the original when I put the nut in there and I put the screw, I succeeded in strip it, stripping out the um, nut. So I had to replace it. But now that's um that's fixed. So we can move to the next stage. Oh what is the next stage then? Okay, that's to put on the same part, turn it around and then insert four nuts in these holes here. One, two, three, four. And um if you want to run, where was it? They were supposed to open that up. Or was it already in a previous instruction? I forgot to mention. Yeah, this here, this plastic cover here. If you want to put in a Raspberry Pi Zero for a running or that, but when I've been thinking about it, I will not put a zero there. I'll buy a, a Raspberry Pi Four with four gigs of RAM. Uh, I think that, I mean you don't need it to run Octoprint, I know, but it is just that so the one has a more general computer connected to the printer, I think I'll, I would go for that. So I'm not going to open this up, but it, it is available if you want. So I'm just going to put the nuts in there. So that's those in. So that was step nine. And then, okay. and ten. Well, actually, ten's not complete yet because we have to put the electronics in. It's this board. screws for them. It's 
see it, but it's right down in there. To use this to be able to go directly down. So, and this one I think I can just do, do with that all the way. So now it's done. I had to struggle with the with the screw that was in there. It was it was a bit hard to get in. Um, don't know if I'm gonna get, it's hidden behind there. So, so anyway, I decided I wouldn't record that. Okay, so that's step um, ten. And I don't want to mess around with pliers near electronics. So okay. So now the next phase is to um, how are we going to show this thing? Is to put it in place somehow, and that would be to take. Three tens, two of them. It's the two remaining for this initiative. And again, they have like extra holes. There's like two. That is so annoying. And then you can't see that in the picture, in the manual, you. I suppose I have to. Black against black, not fun to see. That one. Okay, let's test. Let's see that one then. And then where's the next one? that one. Okay, so it wants us to plug this one in. And this should be the first. Well, okay, that's very unhelpful. We have no markings on the actual PCB as to what plug is what. I did that. I can see there's a lack of space. Okay, uh, we have that one, and then I would actually like to just double. That's in there, I think. And I'm just going to double, double check because they actually have. Way down at the end, they actually do have a map of connections. Ah. Is it here somewhere? Ah, here we go. 
last page. Just because I'm paranoid. Yep, the X axis is the first. So, good. So putting the screws in was step 11, step 12 is preparing this. So it should get a little bit of flexibility on that. It should be in there. Okay. And then we should mount this. So, okay. Ah, that's a bit. So the first screw one has to actually access from. Oh, I would really like to show that. I wonder if the cable will be long enough now. So. Sorry for all the small camera movements. This is interesting. So you need to put it in here, of all places. so easy. But anyway, it's one through here and then on the other side you need to access it from the inside. So I will just fiddle that into place. So that's done. However, I do think that that was not the most optimal way. I didn't really like trying to screw with this so close to the circuit board. So. One, one slip and you're screwing the circuit board and not the screw. So, at the top, I mean. So, and the bottom one wasn't that easy to access. Ah, I don't know. Okay. Compromises, I suppose. Okay. So, that was step 13. Right, now we're getting into some cable management, and I did pre-read this through, and I must say I need to have the printer in the same same position as in this in these pictures, or otherwise I won't ever get this done. So we need to move things around. So try and follow the instructions. So I suggest we take the power k the cables from the power supply, which are these two power cables and the power is going to disappear soon warning cable and we just hang I've hanged them up here at the top so they sort of going in the right direction and then and then they talk about a silver PSU and a black piece PSU so this is the way you root it when you have a black one okay next 
So that's to fix this one here. I would like. So there should be a zip toy that should go down there. see this better in the camera than I can see it when I'm just looking. I wonder if you can see that. Oh, just hidden behind. Right, if we pull the camera down here. It's there. there. Oh, you can see it much better. And then they want to do what? To pull the cable over here. Yes, can. And then they say to be a bit kind when when I'm putting these zip ties on, not to go overboard with the tightness. I think I have it correct. And then it should like disappear up here. That's a quite a good idea. That I'll just move the camera. So I'll put a zip top there just to hold them up there while we work on this. We gotta cut the remaining part without cutting cables. Oh, it's a bit scary. So that was step 15. And to the next one, if we can even understand what this is about. Okay, so let's uh, 
continue up to where? Another tip time. Move the camera back. Oh, they mean this one here. should capture all the cables that are going up somehow nicely group them the way up whoa that slipped in a bit, a bit too fast as well seems to be relatively flat. I mean the legs are here, the feet are there, so it's, I think there would be quite a clearance when one puts it on, the, it won't actually bash on the wires. At least I think that's the case. Oh, no. Typical when one does too many things to lose its tools. And then we're supposed to cut the way the remaining part. It's not near anything moving. Okay, it's just the belt there. No real risk for that just yet. after extra if cable okay so it's here and this should be going up also There, there's two holes. <laughs> now I <I'll> start <laughs> thinking, oh, the cable's gonna be long enough at the top. Ah, oh, I think that'll be okay. I mean, those zip ties aren't so tight that one can't pull them through a little bit. Oh, wait, wait, now we need to be careful. We actually do pull that into the same. So they need to make sure that this x-axis stepper motor cable actually joins this group. Thing. 
One last check. Oh. So I should all be groups there. Leave just a little tiny bit of slack for the the x-axis steppers if it starts to vibrate or something that you know, it can be dampened on the cable so I think, I think that should be okay and then we cut this off also not the cable, not the cable just sing that song Tragic to cut off a coat. Um, okay, so that's on its way up. And that was step 17. 18. Okay, so this is to do with the LCD cables. And that is going to um, mean that my temporary... No, but I can slip them through there, maybe. it says is that we should take these I don't know if I like this way they're suggesting to do it 100% but they want us to cram them in there Unless they're going to be even any tip to hold it. I actually think that's a bit strange. The one would just put it in there and rely on it just holding itself in there. With all the vibrations the printer makes. I think I would like to put a zip tie around here. because there's really nothing here to get in the way. Is that very tight with the bed going backwards? Uh, it is kind of relatively tight. Might be tricky to, to wrap around. I suppose one has to do it the way they think we should do it. And now I really need to understand. I'm just putting it there so it will just hold it while I try and put it in. I still have a bit of a bad vibe about this. I think I would like to put a loose tip tie around there or something. Just to keep the cables together. Could be that I'm just overthinking it. So yeah, let's take a pause and see that. Okay, this is not a Prusa invention. This one's mine. So if I put a loose tip tie around there, like that, 
and then my mon goes to push the I'm gonna put a few more of these and then one can just click it in there. Now what this leads to that this this can't it I mean it it can't just flop out even if the printer's shaking and doing its thing. And these this zip tie does not crush the cable. So I think that's a a reasonable compromise. Unless it make me a bit happier than just having the cable in there which will Oh, I think it would just flop out after a while. Yeah. So I'm just going to put maybe three just to make it in there, get it in there. Anyway, it's optional. Oh, I think that actually worked quite well. They kind of work like artificial clips, keeping the cable flat. It won't fall down and onto the ground or be anywhere near, at least on my feet height. And then I'm not scared of it flopping out of it. Okay, so uh, then the next phase is so this was. Step 18, and step 19, trying to understand, and in the pictures they use the old cables, not the new, I haven't redone really the pictures because of the new cables, ah, doesn't really matter that much. Still, cool to make. Okay, so where are those to, to the whole thing? Okay, not exactly the easiest. Easiest to get to. Okay, not exactly the easiest to get in. Not to pass it back through the frame, wherever the hole is. Okay, uh, let me fiddle with that. So oh, that's that's where it is now. I'm just cut that one off also. Okay, so well, we are up to step nineteen. Wow. <laughs> A lot of steps. Okay, let's see now. Okay, what's next then? And I think my holder here has started to be redundant. same way we did for the other. Oh, I don't to see that. Tough to me. Move to, um... Not here, then. Here. 
So it's the same way we did the other motor. Did it actually go? Oh, it's gone. Oh, I can't really tell, can I? I think it should loop around the cable on the other side. I won't do any damage at least. Oh, okay, you wanted the Z axis. No, it wants everything to go on that zip cable. Oh, sorry, so did this wrong. Take it away. Because actually now we actually need to <laughs> bundle everything. Okay. God, that's a sickening amount of cables. Wonder if I should just Reposition mine. Mm, I think I bring like that. And then we'll put a temporary. Just to calm the situation down while we're trying to get the cables in place. Well, there's really no way of making that bulge smaller. It's still within the tolerance of the feet, I would argue. It looks much slacker in the um, picture. Let's put it okay. try again.
Aha. Where is it? Where? I think I'd actually like to um, show that in the mini can. Oh, I know it's not nice holding it in one's hand. But if I do like this. Well, that's how it's going to look. So they come around the corner and try to group them nicely. And then they're going to be held with this, with that. Okay. I really don't like the way that goes. That's the way the instruction calls for it. So. Ah, flat cables shouldn't be twisted. It bugs me. Years of electronics training that has been banged into me that you should not twist flat cables, especially not on a device that has vibrations. Okay, I don't think this. too much. Okay, not not really a hundred percent happy, but it is according to the instructions. I suppose life isn't perfect. So that's as far as we've come, and it should actually, the cable should be rooted now so that they actually do. Um, of course, hard to see now. They should actually flop down into this general area. No, let's chuck like that. It's because now we're going to turn the printer up where upright. I don't have to work underneath it anymore. I'll get that fixed. Okay, now we have it upright again. And um, this is the cables coming from the bottom. And then we have the electronics box. And, uh, we will just start getting onto that then. Okay, now I've um, set the printer a little bit higher up so that it um, might be picked up some from the main camera to get an overall view. <coughs> and um, I've collected the next parts, which are these cable holders. So there's one with a slanting hole, hole in it. Oh, I can't even see it. It's so black against black, but it's like that. And then the other one is straight. So I put the one that's straight, we put it on the side for now. <coughs> and this here is for the um, bed. And we'll see how this, um, how the documentation will go. Because it's a bit trickier from a filming perspective. Make sure there's no kinks in it. Oops. Make 
so it goes. Yeah. I'm try. This one on. Put the screw in. Look okay. The next one. I don't want to tighten it too much, but bust the plastic. Oh, it seems to go nice and tight. in the door. No. Of course now I've got all these other cables in the way here. different camera angle here. Okay. Oh, I'm worried about people wiring this thing wrong. Anyway, let's have a look. So there's actually what's there three pages? There's three pages of instructions with warning, warning. There's a warning there, warning there. Three, four warnings on this page. So I don't want you to connect it wrong. But anyway, what we are dealing with my specific printer is we're dealing with this cables, so this red and white. And then the layout in the connector is as follows. So this is the first green one, first cable from the PSU. Uh, that's plus and minus. The second cable from the PSU, plus and minus. It doesn't matter in which order you put them there taken from the same common rail in the power supply. And then the uh, cable from heat bed is plus and minus. And then it has this observation where you have a hook in the connector, so that needs to be up, not down. 
and basically it's given the instructions how to connect them, but here it still goes face by face, like the first set from the PSU, the second set from the PSU. It's indicating where the plus is, and then the set for the heated bed. So that's what we're going to go through, and if you feel uncertain when you're doing it yourself, please consult the manual. It's not going to be so easy to film it, 100%. But we will try. Checking myself. Also. <laughs> okay, let's go back to this one, I suppose. I hope this will be good enough. I'll get rid of my temporary support here. Come on. Forget about all other cables coming from the power supply. So here are the leads, and then we just say that that's going to be number one. Screw. Oh, now I'm locking the cam. Too much. filming my fiddling. I will come back when I got those two in place. We're well, supposed to slot them in there with the hook upwards and then tighten it down. So that's the first um, pair connected. So positive, negative, and then I'm going to do the second pair in the same way. It's a bit fiddly. Okay, it's the second pair from the power supply. And then the third is the cable from the, or to the heater, to be more precise. <laughs> it says, okay, cable from the heat pad, yeah. I suppose from the cable perspective it is. So, and again, in the same order. Plus and minus, so I'm going to have to get these these wires bent around and they're going to go into those two. Okay, that's plus and minus heated bed. Double check.
Huh? Should be okay. I'm not short circuiting each other. They look like they're all in and the hook is the right way up, which is outwards. So let's see what's the next. So we have the right pair in the right order and we have the hook upright. And we have followed the sequence as described in the manual. And then we need to prepare the non power supply cover. Final check. Yeah, they just so this is probably a good idiot check to do anyways. So I'll just um, oh that to activate the right cam. polarity is not, I mean the, the order of the cables, so you have like a positive rail and negative rail on the power supply, but then you actually have plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. Uh, so of course from the perspective of the power supply it's only the four first which are maybe. So but anyway I'm just going to do that check. So I just check the um, plus plus minus minus and that the cable for the power outage is in place. So then we put the cover on. The screws go quite deep. Is this another one of these? Very fiddly operation. Oh, that's really deep down there. what everyone does it in these tight situations. Right. Okay, so that's tight. Tighten down. So, so I mean, everybody knows this already, but the main voltage comes through here, so there's no, there's no high voltage behind there. So you could basically, it's the, yeah, it's uh, not like super critical to have that cover there. Probably protects the contacts from being being touched by something that shouldn't do that. Okay, so move things back again. Move on to the next. So this was step 28. Well, I've got really good film lighting, but I mean still black on black is Kind of difficult. But anyway, now we're going to um, 
connect in the uh, YX motor cable and the Z axis cables. And they're all here. One's coming from below. So that's Y. And then these two are for the Z axis. And they need to go into um, this slot. And that's for the Y. And then the Z on these two that are close to each other. Not these two. So this one will be empty. They repeat that in the instruction like five times. <laughs> Maybe they've had lots of people plugging in. In the wrong. Oh, I need to take the boy first. So. Oh, there's no way of not getting one's fingers in the way. So, let's click then. And it doesn't matter uh, in which order we put these Z axis motors in because they run in parallel. Just make sure they go in properly. So this that needs to be out. Here, small click. And what they're emphasizing now, as you see, the cables come all the way out. So now they want us to make sure they actually drop out of the box. So down. So there's going to be some kind of a loop outside the box of cables. They don't. There's going to be a lot of cables coming into this box, I suppose that's why they are a bit concerned. I think I might might actually put a zip around somewhere. Okay, I'll just because those are all the cables that are going to go, come from the bottom, these, the bed cables, and there's only the sensor left for the bed, and then everything else will come from the top. So I would think that I could secure those at the bottom. Uh -huh. I think there's two more cables to connect. And then, actually, when you look at the instructions and you look at what I have, I think I've ended up making a quite a tight cable bundle because there is actually more slack down here than what they have in the, if you look at the pictures in the instruction well anyway uh, so I can't I won't connect those until um, we've connected the rest of the cables so okay so the power down warning signal should go that way down and to here. No, wait, do I have it the right? Maybe I actually have it wrong. Oh, there's no. Okay, does it actually go? This one on the top. Yeah, okay, that was me saying wrong. Oh, surprise, surprise. Okay. And then they want us to connect the heated bed temperature sensor. To go into the first hole. So, wow. That one there. Let's 
so, like that. Okay, now there should be all the cables coming from below. So now I think it would be a better idea to organize it. Okay, so I just, uh, they're, they're very concerned about the one shouldn't bunch cables in the box. So I put the zip tie there, collecting all the tables going down, and then this. I put a zip tie here to pull it away from the bed that's going to go back with some boards, and then put a zip tie there, and then I also check that I can actually close the, close the box okay. So that seems to be fine. Um, yeah, and then there are the remaining LCD cables, but I don't want to crimp them. No. As I said previous, I don't want to crimp these in. You know, I'll, I'll handle those separately. Okay, now we need to um, put the hot end cables in. And the first thing you need is to do is to fish that out. And then I need to make sure that this is a bit twisted along its length. So. Okay, and then in theory what one should do is to group all these and then the amount of sleeve that should go in is like nearly through the hole. But first you need to position the, this here, the nylon strip, hard to see, into the hole that's on the side there. And then you need to see that it, that it doesn't push on the motor cable in the corner there too much. And if it does, you need to push it back into the sleeve. to fiddle this in there with two screws so my hand is mostly going to be in the way so I'll be back when I get that done so now it's in and then sorry I'm moving the camera but the gap there make sure that that um, my cables okay that this um, cap there closes on both sides and that the sleeve is not caught in between so help it with the finger a bit on both sides make sure it's and then of course check that you don't get any of these cables unduly crimped so another fiddly job completed Let's see what's next So, let's see now, I've introduced an extra filament sensor, so it's this orange bit and I seem to be very paranoid about that being correct because there's two, um, there's actually two plugs, um, lower row for the MK 3S, and then if you have the MEMU, then it'll be the upper part, upper row. So that's probably kind of an alignment. So if this one is dropped out in transport, then make sure you have it and it's in place on the board. We shouldn't plug it in yet. So here we go. Step 35: connecting all the cables.
are there. Number one. It's that one there. Oops, I went the wrong way around. So, those need to somehow come down to the bottom of the box. Next, hot and fan. this with the braided cable protection. Trying to plug it in the wrong way again. I'm very good at plugging things in the wrong way. Trying to plug things in the wrong way. Just a little tiny bit off the side. That's why I didn't want to go. Okay, then three print fan. Okay, let's move this black. Be so straight. Just a sec. Sorry, my fault. Wrong cable because it's marked actually with red. So it's actually this one. That was my screw up, but thankfully they, they don't plug in. Wrong cables don't go into wrong places, so that's good. At least there. So fixed. Yeah, that looks like according to the pictures, so that's red cable, black cable, braided, and then red marked. Okay, IR sensor with two wires facing the right, 
Number four, use the bottom row, leave the upper row free. ER sensor, and that's this one. It's actually got a black cable there. And, um, white, red, and then it screams at you in the manual to use the lower. Let's confirm it again. Use the bottom row. It's actually capitalized. I can actually show. It. <laughs> Let's put it in the top, shall we? And then we'll contact Prusa support and see how long it takes them to uh, figure it out. Could very easily plug it into the wrong row. Oh, that should be all right now. Double checking that the white cable should be there and the red cable over here on the right of the small camera. Oh, I don't know if it's. Maybe we can just switch to. The overhead view does much. Okay, what are we doing here? Extruder motor, yellow label with E. We're missing one cable. Ah, disappeared. In. There. I should say E, yep. Where does that need to go? Okay, that's in the last slot for the motors. And oh my god, it's all in the line there. Okay, that's gonna take a while to fiddle in there. So that should go into the last motor slot. Which is like in 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 there. And you can't really see it. So anyway, I, I got it in there. It's actually partially I created the problem because I did some cable management. Oh, okay, I extrude a thermistor, green, yellow. Number six. This one. Really, the same colors. Okay, green, yellow marking tape. In the picture, in the manual, it's. whatever color. Oh, that's crap. Okay. To live without them. And it needs to go into the corner here. Oh, come on. Again, black on black. It feels so blind. Ah, that's in the correct place now. 
That's <sighs> the Pinder Pro cable. that we have everything now in place. Okay, then it's the LCD. But, um, if I try and feel a little bit closer, maybe. difficult to film these small boxes. Oh, let's try and go through it anyway. Extruder heater is there on that connector. And then put in fan number two. That's the one next to it. And it should be black cable. Number two. Black cable goes in there. And the print fan number three. Next one. Red label, yeah. And then it's IR sensor two K facing to the right. And that's this one on the lower row. One can see the on the lower row. Okay. An extruder motor. Oh that's easy, that was the one on the side. It's really hard to put it in the wrong holes and even if I can't film it. Only one slot left. Extruder thermistor, green, yellow. Which wasn't, it was green, yellow um, tape put on it. So the, it seems like these cables for the thermistor, they can be whatever. And then pinned a probe number seven, which is up here. So that's the pin the probe. This one here. Okay, so I think that we double checked everything we can. Okay, now it's gone. Going to have to require some organization to actually close. Well, it's actually, ah, it does close. But now there's a bit more force needed. But anyway, I think I'll fiddle with these a bit later. Trying to flatten them out a bit. So this is what they warn that when you come to this phase, then you, the box starts to get really full. And we have not put the LCD control cables in yet. That's the next step. So 
So the one with one stripe. Keyed. Can't put it in the wrong way. Check. Yeah, looking okay. Even now it's getting pretty impossible to see any. Okay, so that's for the LCD control, and then it's the final step 30. check everything. Okay. And after that is to um yeah, no, it's to um close this. So, organize the cables a bit, that's what I'm going to do now, I don't know how I'm going to do that, and then this is the long screw that goes through to screw it together. Okay, so that's closed up. I just pushed and shoved it a little bit on the cable since see that nothing gets stuck in the, in the side. I mean it's more cramped than I would like to have it but that's the case if I wants to make a small electronic box. And um, connections are double checked. The bed will move without hitting anything. Uh, what else to say? Oh, I think that's as best as we can have it for now. could install the feet. I haven't already done it, but I've already did that a long time ago. And I do actually recommend putting them on in the early stage. Okay, now we should put the spool holder together. So, I got the parts for that. That's the spool holder. So this is the spool holder and according to the instructions it's just to uh, push it in and turn it and that seemed to actually work on that side at least. Let's see if it works on. Or was there a specific order one needs to do it? <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. Instructions. Okay. okay. 
I did say, oh, let's see if it works better if I do it on one side and then the other. I don't know. But anyway, that seemed to work better. So hold it that way and then put this one in first. And then that one. And then we need to position it on the frame. I mean, this can be adjusted afterwards. So. You can actually put two spools on it. That's not bad. Okay. Okay, it's probably that should go on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> ah, that uh, aluminium. Don't like putting so much force. But anyway, that can be there for now. Um, it's a compromise I suppose, having if you have tools, two spools, but whatever, that's done. Oh, I can't really see it on the camera. It's a bit too wide. There, like that. Approximately in the middle. No, yeah, I think that'll Actually, it works very sturdy. So, Haribo time for those that have one. That's so now the whole thing is together. Um, so, we'll just call this video. Um, Then it's the um, 9 pre-flight check, and we'll take that in the next video. If you enjoyed this one, consider subscribing, hit the like button, tell others about this, important, if they're struggling to get this done, and um, see you in the next one. And don't miss that, you might see me blow up a printer. <laughs>